Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Okay, so we had made great plans. We had, we had taken a great amount of time to consider the status of things, to look at how, how things were, what was happening with the pandemic, what was happening across the community. And as we did that, we came to the conclusion that it was safe enough to have our Christmas Eve our Christmas Day, and our Christmas One services as we had planned. Now, we had never planned to have evening services on the two Saturdays, Christmas Day and, and New Year's Day. We had not planned to have those, but we had planned to have services through, through Christmas. And so we gathered together, and everything was wonderful. And the, I have to tell you, the number of people, some of you, in fact, who came up to us after the services or who reached out to us by email or by phone and said, I got to tell you, that really made Christmas seem like Christmas. It really warmed our hearts. It was great and wonderful. And so we're kind of flying high. I'm just kind of moving along on that magic carpet. And then I got an email. And then I got another email. And then I got a phone call. And then I got another phone call. We were at the Christmas blah, blah, blah service. And it was a great and wonderful occasion for us. And we have COVID. We've tested positive. And with each one of those, it was like a kick in the gut. My magic carpet came somewhere below surface pretty quickly. I suspect you've had similar kind of experience of late. It's been, been two years, two years since we first heard about this this, pan, this, this virus. And in the beginning, we, we, didn't, we didn't think too much about it. But then last spring, we thought that we were kind of through it, and we began to open up again. And then in the summer, we shut back down because we had another surge. And, and then we were, we were easing out of it again. In my naivete, I thought that we were on the, enough on the other side of this that it would be safe, and in some ways it probably was. I even set my overcautiousness a bit aside, and, and, and we, we said, yes, we're going to do these services. So I began to think, 
during the week, oh, what have I done? It was tough. But you know what that's like. You've been through these kinds of things with us too, on these, uh, especially with this pandemic. It's a good day. It's not a good day. Things are going great. Things are not going great. Well, at least it's not that deadly. Who would have thought that would be a compliment? So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of working my way through all of this, and then one of my favorite feast days of the year comes up, Epiphany. January the 6th, always have enjoyed celebrating the arrival of the Magi. The crash is finally finished, and it's there as it ought to be. Everybody's there fine and good, but now the focus is no longer on Epiphany on January the 6th. The focus is on what happened on January the 6th in 2020. Another gut punch right, right there. Now, I, I've lived long enough. I know that these things don't last, that you can get through them. But, but still, I began to look around to, to see what I was going to do, and I began to think about how we're going to do this weekend. I had I decided early in the week if we didn't have any more cases that we would, we would go ahead and do in-person services this weekend. And so I was waiting to see what was going to happen with that, and I started to prepare for, for the homily. And I, I, I looked, and, and I knew it was the baptism of our Lord today was the, the celebration this weekend. And, and, I looked at this, and I looked at it, and I thought, you know, I, how can I preach on that? One, I just had these texts just a few weeks ago, the very same ones. And now I've got to deal with this again. What am I going to do? I can't find any inspiration to help me get through any of this. And then... Curious thing happened. I, there was a phrase in today's gospel that just stuck in my head. And it's that first phrase of that first verse. And they gathered in expectation. In expectation. And I thought, why? What does that mean? What does that have to do with, with Jesus' baptism? What does that have to do with any of this? And why can't I get it out of my head? And then something else came to mind. There's a poem by Emily Dickinson. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches on your soul and sings the tune without the word. It never stops at all. And I thought, that's it. That's what that first verse means. It wasn't simply that they came with expectation. They came with hope. And what is hope? other than the expectation that things are going to change for the good. It's not hopeful if they're going to change for the bad, is it? But they came to that place with hope. And I began to, to think about that and to think about what that meant for us, means for us, and what it meant for them. And I began to get my wind back. I began to be able to breathe again. And the carpet didn't come all the way up to here, but, it, but it's not below ground anymore. And that's because of, of hope. You see, these folks that came to see John the baptizer, they came with the hope of seeing the Messiah. They knew the stories. They knew the faith 
stories. They knew the, the stories of their tribes and the various people around whom they, they lived their lives. They, they, they heard them tell this story over and over. Our lives are bad under Rome. They, what they didn't know is they were going to get worse. Our lives are bad under Rome, but God is going to send someone to deliver us. And that's why they came to see John. They came to see him because they were in hope that that was the Messiah, that John was the Messiah. Just like I made decisions in hope that we were at a place where that would pan out, everything would be okay. And just as you do things hopefully, but they came as individuals to this place because they hoped. I've come to believe that some of the great people who express hope are dreamers, people who, who can, can dream about what's coming. Do, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech is a great example of that. Somebody who can, can cast out there the way in which things ought to be. They can dream. So as I began to think about that, I began to hear a song. And don't worry, I'm not going to sing, okay? You may say that I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. Maybe someday we can join together and we'll all be as one. Hope. Hope that somehow we can become something greater than ourselves. As much as they came as individuals, they were there as a group. Now, let's, let's, let's be honest. There were prob I'm, no, probably to it. There were a whole lot more people who were not there than those who were. But one of the first traits of the ones who were there is they got up and got out. They had hope, and they were willing to go and do whatever they needed to do because of the hope that was part of their lives. So they got up, and they went out, and they didn't, I, I suspect they didn't know what they were going to do. They were hoping they would see the Messiah. But beyond that, they didn't know. But they did something. Because, because they had hope. You and I are, are, are like that. I think that you and I gather here at times because of hope. We hope to see something or to experience something or to gather something, but we do it for hope. Expectation that somehow things are going to change, something is going to change for the better. But there's something else very special about this, this text, this, this gospel message that, that we have before us this morning, and that is that after... Notice how, how Luke writes this. When all had been baptized, and also, by the way, Jesus. I, I love the way he did that. Then the heavens opened, and God blessed what had happened. You see, I think that's what happens when you and I gather in hopeful expectation that it becomes a time and a place and a gathering that is somehow blessed by God. And when that happens, the possibilities are unlimited. And you and I can trust in the hope. You know, I believe, I have hope 
that we are going to make it through all of this stuff. We're going to make it through the pandemic stuff. We're going to make it through the political stuff. We're going to make it through all of that. And we're going to make it through all of that because we have hope. We have hope enough that we're going to get up and do something. May not be the best thing in the world, but we're going to do something. We're going to be hopeful because we come together and we give each other hope. And it's going to be important. And it's going to be world changing because it is blessed by God. So on those days, weeks or whatever you may have, sometimes have both, when it seems the wind is gone and there's nowhere you think to go from this point on, hope. Hope will get us through. Remember, hope is the thing with feathers that perches on the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacrament. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. 
that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for all the ministries at Iona Hope. We offer our thanksgivings for the many blessings of this day and all those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. We pray for all those in our world who are in harm's way, especially the health care workers, first responders, those who are sick and being treated for the coronavirus, and all those who are vulnerable, afraid, and alone. We pray for peace and unity in the country and in our world. We pay, pray for the repose of the soul of Edmund Carr and Dee Fredrickson. We pray for those who are committed to our daily prayers, especially Rhonda, Rob, Mary Ann, Gary, Maureen, Margaret, Mindy, David, Joseph, Susan, Mary Ann, Liz, Natalie, Nancy, Alan, James, Lee, Stephen, Pat, Sherry, Ray, Shelby, Brandy, Telly, Jim, Jason, Joan, Val, Len, Bill, Amanda, Chelsea, and Marlene. And we pray for our pets, Molly, Morty, Lizzie, Brody, Harley, and Aslam. In our congregation, we pray for the Kellen family, the Kelly family, the Kelt family, the Kennedy family, and the Kenny family. Are there others for whom we should pray and blessings for which we give thanks? Let us confess our sins to God. 